Hello everyone, I hope you guys are having a blessed day today. Um, first, I want to give you the gospel. It is found in 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4. And I told us that Jesus Christ died for our sins, was buried, and on the third day rose from the dead for our justification. Jesus always existed. He is the second person of Godhead, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. He lived heaven, was born of a virgin, lived the perfect life, never sinned, and shed his precious blood on the cross of Calvary for the forgiveness of all of our sins, past, present, and future. And to reconcile us back to God, to give us eternal life. Um, so yeah, Bible tells us very clear as God commands that we must believe this gospel concerning His Son Jesus Christ. Okay, if you believe that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, and that He died for your sins, He paid it all, past, present, and future. Okay, to reconcile you back to God, so that you'll be forgiven forever and will never be standing in judgment for sins ever again. Okay. Um, so you, you can be consulted to God, like I said, you know, just believe the gospel, you know, his blood was sufficient and he, and he paid it all. He said it is finished on that cross for a reason. He didn't say, okay, um, I've done my part now and it's your turn. No, he said it is finished. It means it's done. You know, he came to fulfill what he was destined to do. And that is to save the lost and to reconcile us back to God, to give us eternal life. And we have all of that. If you will just believe in him today and what he has done for you and in who he is okay so believe the gospel today very important now let's talk about some things real quick um so we know in the story of lot you know many actually don't even understand that in scripture the bible also do talk about when jesus spoke um i can't remember exactly which which passage when he said in the days of as it were in the days of lot so shall even in times you know or the coming son of man right so many don't understand what was entailed in the days of Lot. It was extremely wicked and evil during those days. Um, if, if, if you read Genesis, and then you find out that, the, that God was trying to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, which is the city where Lot was in, you know, in that city. And God and Abraham was interceding on behalf of the city, asking God to spare the city. And God... Pretty much, they kind of went back and forth, you know, said, what about 50? He said, well, if I find 50, then I will save the city that I want. There was not even 50 righteous people in that city, okay? And we know how a person is righteous by, by their faith in God, right? Um, in the Old Testament, by their faith in God and in the coming Messiah, obviously, you know. But there was none. They didn't have 50. There were some righteous people, but we'll get to that. Abraham kept negotiating with God, and God even went all the way down to 10. If there were 10 righteous, I would save the city. They didn't even have 10 people in our whole city that is righteous, according to God's standard of righteousness. Not even five. Okay? And what ended up happening, as evidence of that, we see that when the angels came, the two angels came, even the city got it, you know, the man and children, that's what it tells you, men and children, okay? They say, bring the angels out that we may know them. Well, they didn't know they were angels. They just saw the, the two men that we may know them. And know them is not saying, you know, hello, how are you doing? It's sex in a sexual perverse way, as in homosexuality, okay? Ring a bell? Okay. So this is kind of what was happening in that time period, Um it wasn't just the homosexual, it was uh, promiscuity, unnatural things like bestiality. They, they, they have all kinds of, every perverse sexual thing you could think of, they were involved into that, okay? It was, homosexual wasn't just one of them, it was just everything, okay? They were into every freaking thing. Um, fornication was just like the minimal part of that, but again, you know, not trying to minimize it, I'm just saying, you know, it's just everywhere, okay? The whole city was just a complete dump at this point. And there was other things that they were doing, you know, obviously unjust, you know, their murders as well, you know. So there's a lot involved with, with Sodom and Gomorrah, you know, on fairness. I mean, we can put on a whole big list. But God's like, you know what? This is just, this has reached the, the limit, that I'm going to, you know, you know, allow, you know. So God wanted to destroy the city as an example for future generations, you know, on what's to come. Now, fast forward where we are. That, well, prior to that, God rescued Lot, okay? Lot 
was considered righteous. According to Jude, according to Peter, okay, Lot is, uh, Lot is called righteous Lot for a reason. Now, Lot was vexed with the things that was happening in that city, you know? Yeah, he was vexed, you know what I mean? Because even though he lived in the city, now keep in mind, this is the same man who was, who wanted to give up his two virgin daughters, okay, to these people instead of the the uh, <laughs> the angels that came into his house, right? And they didn't want the women, they want the men. Let us sink in for a second, okay? This is how horrible it was in you know in the time of Lot. Now, when the angels finally uh, took him out, they Lot wasn't moving fast enough, so they had to actually hurry up and take him out of there, okay? Obviously, his wife looked back, which she's not supposed to look back. She told not to look back. She looked back, turned to pillow, start, you know the story on that. But Lot and his two daughters, you know, went. Now, so it was just Lot and his two daughters, you know what I'm saying, that was able to escape, all right? They was able to escape before judgment began to rain down on the cities and the nearby cities as well. It wasn't just Solomon and Gomorrah and the nearby city that was next to him. Also, because all that sin permeated into that too. So they all got, you know, you know, laid out, you know, by fire and brimstone. Um, so, and the crazy thing is, the same place is evidence today. I actually seen some footages where people actually went to the location and there was nothing there. And there was still some sulfur in that area where they were testing the sulfur picked up in that area that they found. And it was like too pure to still remain pure after all those years you know and they can even explain how it's still pure up to this date well that's god's judgment evidence of that is still there anyway with that being said you have to understand where we are as, as a society today the fail the fall of a nation we see it transpiring before our very eyes people can be you know <laughs> living in the in, in the delusion if they want to or in denial it doesn't change the fact that these things must happen you know what i mean that's the point. That these things must happen, and we know that it's, it's going down, you know. Whether we like it or not, it is a very uncomfortable to witness. I mean, can we please talk about the crazy... It's almost like someone opened up this zoo, let all the wild animals out, and threw away the key, okay? Now, all the wild animals are running, uh, running loose, just doing whatever the heck they want. And if you're trying to stop the wild animals, then you are a problem because you're trying to stop them. How dare you trying to stop them from being a wild animal? What? No. we got a bunch of mental patients, man, okay? Evidently, okay? This society is done. Demons are running rampant through these people, and it is not even funny anymore, you know? I can't tell you how many identifications I've come across with people Posting what they identify with on on the web. It is beyond crazy, guys. Like, I don't know what else to think at this point. Like, where does it end? It's like the Pandora's box that was opened by Obama. Mm -hmm. I said what I said. You know, all kind of things are flowing right out of it. You know what I'm saying? Nonstop, too. When you think, okay, maybe they have reached the climax. No, it keep coming. Like, what is, what is the next thing you're going to identify with now? I'm still waiting for someone to come and claim that they are now identified as the president and they need to take over the White House. I'm still waiting for that one. <laughs> Maybe that's what, you know, the person sitting there did. Who, who knows? Yeah, I'm throwing shade. But whatever. The point I'm trying to make is all this stuff that's happening, as uncomfortable as it is, it must happen. Okay? And it's very frustrating to say the least because... All the companies, all the major corporations have bowed down to this particular, to one particular major community that think that they are now the new women. They're better than the, you know, biological women, and they think they're better than biological men too. So pretty much, they want to re replace the real women, and they want to replace the real men. And when the real men stand up, they say, Toxic masculinity, okay? But they demonstrate toxic, toxic masculinity, okay? In order for them to stand up and try to act like a man. So help me make sense with that one, you know? Same thing with the femininity, you know? You said, oh, it's the feminine, feminine, feminine. But then 
you want to be more feminine than the feminine? <laughs> I mean, this is crazy, guys. You know, it's like a wild, like we are dealing with some major wild cards here, guys. You know, you got people claiming to be animals now, okay? People claiming to be vegetables. I kid you not, okay? They, they want to be, I see now one of his smoking. He said his name is Mr. Broccoli, you know? You know, call him, he, he dressed up like a broccoli and then said that's his name. Like, while all this is happening, the world stage is being set. There is war on the horizon, okay? Believe me when I tell you this. Do not be sold into this foolishness and this whole thing with Trump, indictment, all that stuff is just a, 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 to keep people away from focusing on what really matters, you know? And one thing that's important is to show you the hands. They're showing you the hands. There are bills being passed, okay, to pretty much... Um, Actually, they, they, they're pushing this bill, you know, <laughs> about your privacy and to pretty much control what app you can have on your phone and whatnot, you know, um, or to make it like such as TikTok. They want, they want to ban TikTok, but that's not what that really is about. There's a lot more to that, you know, and I found out a lot more stuff about it that's make you be like, hmm, not it makes sense, you know. Um, also, you have like Instagram, Facebook, you know, they decide, oh, we're going to sell people verified check mark, And it just bugs my mind how people want to be somebody so much that they're willing to pay 15 bucks a month just to have a blue checker next to their name so they could feel like they're special, okay? Instagram sold $44 million of those. So $660 million in one, you know, when they released that. I mean, let us sink in for a second. So this is about how much, if, if the number remains the same, that's every month, Okay? You see how people are just, this society is done, guys, you know. Women, a lot of women today don't even want to be married, and so is the man, you know. I mean, it's just, you talk about the family structure is completely destroyed by this generation, you know. I wonder what's going to happen next. Abortion is on the rise because they don't want you having kids. You know, they don't want to sterilize people, you know. Everything is, the main agenda here is population control. Reduce the population Eliminate as much people as possible and make sure that the reproductive system is not the way it should be. There's a reason behind all of this, guys. You know, the enemy is very crafty, you know. But I'm here to tell you this. Among all the craziness, the dollar about to go tank, okay? We see it brewing. All these other nations now have agreed to trade with a different currency outside of the U.S. dollar. So, and people aren't having attention to that one either. <laughs> like, there's a lot that's happening all at once. I'm like, 2023 came with a boom. It came with a big boom. And it's like, you wake up every day, there's something new. Like, what is going on? You know? I mean, if we can see the time we're living in, I don't know what else needs people need to be convinced about at this point. You know? We know what's happening in the Middle East, with Israel. I mean, there's so much transpiring. Now, none of this stuff has anything to do with the rapture, but we know we see this it's looking more crazier, leaning towards the tribulation. But we know the rapture is before the tribulation. You know what I'm saying? So we know for a fact, as we see this looming before the tribulation, don't even get me sort of with the weird weathers that we see that's happening in places it shouldn't be happening, okay? That's shocking a lot of people, you know? Um, who would have thought that we have snow in Southern California? Now, I'm talking about like San Diego, Chula Vista, snow. Having tornado, what? That's crazy. You know what I mean? So <laughs> there's just some things that's happening around the world. I mean, the disasters is just ramping up. You know, there's so much happening. But amongst all of that, as painful it is to see and to watch, many people are losing so much. I mean, I know a lot of people say, Lord, how much more are we going to take? This is the question that's coming from a lot of people, you know. Some people say, oh, you know, the Lord, you know, is patient and not waiting for any to perish. So, yeah. So, just think about how all those lost people this and First of all, I don't want to hear it anymore, guys. Okay, seriously. You know, if that's your comment, get off my page. I'm telling you right now. You know, I'm not in the mood for that anymore because you know what? What's happening is real. You know what I'm saying? The Lord been very patient and he, we don't know how long it will take before he comes and gets us out of here. But to say this is like almost trying to put a pacifier or trying to shut someone up 
for speaking out on their frustration. People are frustrated. You have to understand that we're humans, you know. Maybe you live in a very comfortable home. You you have nothing to worry about. Everything is furnished for you. That's great for you, you know what I mean? But that's not the same for a lot of people. Many people are really struggling, and they are like at their wit's end, you know. And they all they're doing is hanging by the thread, just looking to Jesus, you know. That's all they have, you know. Um, so we can't sit here and try to project our own um, comfort towards those who doesn't have the same as us, you know what I mean? So think about this persecution that's happening. We see the murders that took place, and yet the news media did not cover any of that to bring blame. Instead, they're more concerned about misgendering somebody. Give me a freaking break. If this not if this is an attack on Christianity, the man is, I mean, is being arrested for preaching the gospel right by abortion clinic, you know. <laughs> I mean, guys, you talk about First Amendment, right? They don't give a done about your constitutional rights. I mean, this is so clear. How many times do we have to see this? But everyone else, the Christians can be having their little rally, and then you have the people who are anti us can sit there and spill everything in your face, throwing stuff at you. Not a single arrest happens to them. But if a Christian comes and just want to preach in their rally, you get arrested for causing, you know, <laughs> disturbance, right? You are you are aggravating the people, so you get arrested. But when they do it, they don't. I mean, think about it. Satan is really running exactly what he should be doing, <laughs> you know. But you know what? He's doing all that because he knows he's trying to get as many people not ready for the rapture as possible, and he's being very successful as that, you know, because he wants people to go through God's judgment. And then you have in the Christian circle where people who deny the rapture completely or claim that the bride of Christ will have to go through the tribulation, people who does not understand their Bible. And it's so sad to me, you know, that you can sit here and say that you're saved by grace through faith, but God is going to put you through the tribulation. Or they will say things like, well, technically, they, you know, um, uh, uh, Satan's wrath is, is um, you know, what people have to go through first, you know, during the, during the seals. And then the second half, you know, God's wrath. No. It is God's wrath from the beginning to the end. Why? Because who breaks the seal? It is the lamb who was slain before the foundation of the earth, Jesus Christ himself. And who's with him, you know, before the seal is broken? The saints, as in saved believers who were there with him before he breaks the seal. So if you don't know your Bible, stop talking like you know what you're talking about because you don't, obviously, you know, and it's frustrating that we have to keep regurgitating the same thing and trying to keep defending the same thing, but we're not going to stop because I'm sick and tired of the lies that the enemy is projecting using some Christians, deceiving them to think that God is this is this pathetic, you know what I'm saying, warden who makes promises that he can keep. I mean, that, that's an insult to the same guy that you claim to love, but give me a break, guys. Like, wake the heck up. Seriously. Things is getting more real, and it's getting realer than most of you even imagine. There's a lot more words I can go on here and say, but I would have just saved that, you know? I'm just here to, to encourage you guys, man. You know, please, if you haven't believed the gospel, I urge you to do so. You have really nothing here, you know? When all hell breaks loose, which you will, you know, <laughs> you don't want to be here for that, you know? And if the Lord comes and takes us out of here before any of that, you definitely don't want to be here for what's to come. Because what's to come, keep in mind, restraining is restraining, and we're seeing this right here. I can't even imagine what it will look like when he stops restraining the evil. When he stops restraining the evil, can you imagine what the world will look like without the restrainer restraining anymore? That's insanity, okay? We think things is crazy right now. Oh, Arkham Asylum times a million is coming, okay? <sighs> anyway... Please believe the gospel and just keep looking to Jesus for those who are struggling, battling depression because of everything that they're witnessing. Let me tell you something. The Bible says to fear not, okay? Jesus himself says to fear not, okay? He is everything and that he's all we got. So you got to look to him, okay, no matter what. Look to Jesus and find your comfort in him, okay? When you start feeling like this is getting too overwhelming, remind yourself you are a child of God and that he loves you. And he will come for us one of these days, okay? Let's just keep looking to Jesus as we live 
on this earth and keep standing on truth. Do not confirm nor affirm anything that goes against, you know, uh, scriptures. Okay, do not do that. Okay, if people get offended, that's the point because they don't care about offending you as a Christian. So you shouldn't care about offending them when they're going against, you know, scripture. The bottom line is this: the the enemy hates you. Those people who you think. Oh, we just have to show love, love. Love is being honest with them. This is exact. This is wrong. And hey, I, I understand that you want to affirm yourself. This I'm just not gonna be, you know, part of that. Okay, they have the same right as you do. Okay, that means you don't have to go along just to get along. You know, they're gonna hate you. Let them hate you. At least the people hate you. Let them hate you for being honest. But the people just hating you just because you're Christian. Because you think by affirming them, they love you. No, they hate you because you're Christian. Period. You know what I'm saying? If it was up to them, they want every Christian dead. That's exactly what they, you know, what they want. They don't want no Christians alive at all. Why do you think that? Okay? Because they know what the Bible says. And like the Bible says in Romans 1, they do what? They deny God. You know what I mean? Because of their unrighteousness. They're trying to suppress the truth in their unrighteousness. And so, therefore, if we can suppress them by any means necessary, let's do it. That's exactly what they're doing, you know. So, they, they, these are not your friends. These are enemies of God, period. You know, you want to be a friend of God, you got to be a born-again believer. You know what I'm saying? You have to just be honest with people and just tell them what it is, you know. I love you, but this, I will not affirm this. I'm sorry, you know. This is against the natural order of things, the way God created. If that's what you feel like, then so be it. But I'm just not going to be part of that, you know, mental mental asylum game that you're playing. I'm just not, you know, hey, if that offends you, I'm offended that you want me to affirm you. That's that, okay? So anyway, guys, you guys have a blessed day and keep standing on God's words, keep standing on the truth, and keep looking to Jesus no matter what you see happening, all right? Peace.